Welcome to the 9th Line Mountain Studio video tutorial. This tutorial is all about how to use the arrangement view in Ableton Live to build a song. So far we've been exploring many things within Ableton Live and all of our learning has centered around this workspace environment that you see here. This workspace is called the session view and it's particularly good for building beats and melodies, trialing out different beats and melodies together and working with audio sampling. What you might not have known is that there is a whole other working area within this program that is designed specifically for building all of these elements into a song. And so building a song involves making decisions like, I want the song to start with this synth line on its own, and then after that loops four times, I want that drum beat to come in, and then I want the bass to come in at the same time that the original synth line changes key, etc, etc. Working with these decisions and learning how to navigate the arrangement workspace is an important step towards producing your own records. So the first and most important thing you need to know is that you can switch between the two workspaces simply by clicking on these buttons here. Both spaces are present every time you open up Ableton. You just flick between the two spaces and they exist in parallel. A shortcut to flicking between the two spaces is to use the tab button on your keyboard. So let's fast forward through everything that we've learnt so far that we can kind of simulate a situation where we have a number of clips and we're ready to start the building phase of a song in the arrangement. I'll start with loading some sounds into a drum machine, make a couple of clips with different beats. And now I'll add a bass line. I'll add a new MIDI track by going to create and then insert MIDI track. I can drag across a bass preset synthesizer. add another sound over the top, maybe a higher sound. I'll create a new MIDI track again, add another synth preset and really change that a bit there and create some clips so we've got a few layers happening there in the song now. Okay, now we are ready. Let's get started. The simplest way to get started in the arrangement workspace is to record in what you're playing live from this session view here. If you use these controls at the top, this is what we call the transport controls, you'll be able to record in what you're playing. Just hit record and then start to click play on the clips that you want to record in. Remember that if you arrange your clips into scenes, it means you can hit play on a number of them at any one time. You'll notice that this small section of the screen starts to move and has coloured bars on it. That's like a sneak preview of what's being recorded in the background, so you can be sure that everything's working as it's supposed to. Right, so let's press stop or hit spacebar to stop the recording and then navigate over to our arrangement page to check what happened. And there it is. We can press play and hear what we've recorded and check we like it. Note that while it's playing, it's still possible to go back into the session view and play clips. You might want to do this to trial a different clip at any one point in the song. But whenever you do this, the button up there lights up in red. It acts as a kind of warning to let you know that you're hearing something different to what you have stored in the arrangement view. To go back to what you had stored, just click on that button and it will go back to grey and you will again be listening to what you recorded in. In order to get clips into the arrangement view, you can also literally drag and drop them. Just click on it, here I've got a clip from the drum track. Click and drag over to the button where you change the view. It'll switch for you and then keep on dragging until you're hovering over the correct track. There's the drums and just release the mouse. So there it is, you've entered in a clip just by dragging and dropping. Importantly, you can edit what you have recorded using your mouse afterwards. 
This is the most common way of building songs because it allows complete control and there isn't the pressure of having to do a one take wonder. Even if you're the kind of person who prefers to kind of go with your heart and, and play something in live, you'll nevertheless want to use the mouse to edit up any mistakes afterwards. A lot of the editing methods are similar to what we have learnt when editing beats and melodies. You have the square bracket when you hover over the corners of the clips and that way you can expand or contract the length of the clip that loops. You can drag and drop things around and delete them by clicking on them and pressing backspace or delete. You can also create a split or a cut in any clip by clicking the cursor where you want to split it and then pressing Apple E on a Mac or Control E on a PC. A very handy one is the duplicating. Just click on something and then press Apple D on a Mac or Control D on a PC and you'll duplicate that same clip again and again. Just keep doing that for ages to get a really long loop of one thing. And finally, you'll need to move around this space, zooming in and out to check that everything is as you had planned it and in the right point of the song. You have the bar numbers written up here as a kind of a time ruler using bars as time, and then you have the actual time length of the song down there on the bottom. To move around through the time, you need to move your cursor into this area above the bar numbers, and it will turn into a magnifying glass. Now click and drag up and down to zoom in and out. Then you can drag left and right to head backwards or forwards through the song. You can have a play dragging in all directions if you want. It's a bit weird at first but it becomes very intuitive because you can eventually navigate to any particular time or with one movement of the mouse. Okay, so let's assume that I'm happy with this arrangement. I'll just save it there into a folder that I'm creating for my new record. Now I'm ready to start recording some vocals over the top. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next tutorial, so keep watching.